America makes its choice. We are counting down the top 10 reasons why you should not vote for Barack Obama, in my opinion. Up next, number seven. The senator is campaigning on change, but the only thing he seems to be changing is his mind and often. The summer may be over, but for Barack Obama, it's not quite time to put away all those flip-flops. A following the senator's positions on many issues will leave you dizzy. Throughout his campaign, the presidential hopeful has consistently backpedaled, and the growing list of flip-flops goes all the way back to the beginning of his campaign. In October of last year, Obama created a firestorm when he said that he stopped wearing the American flag pin on his lapel after 9-11. I won't wear that uh, pin on my chest. Instead, I'm going to try to tell the American people what I believe will make this country great. But then a few months later, well, somehow that flag pin was back on his lapel. But that was just the beginning. When it came to campaign financing, the senator, well, he also couldn't keep his word. I would be very interested in, in pursuing public financing. Oh, really, Senator? Then why did you post this statement on your website just a few months later? We've made the decision not to participate in the public financing system for the general election. And now we're just getting warmed up. Some of the Illinois senator's biggest blunders have been about serious policy issues. He began his campaign by promising to immediately begin withdrawing troops out of Iraq if he were elected president. I will bring this war to an end in 2009. But it seems that just a few months later, Obama was telling a very different story. I've always said that the pace of withdrawal uh, would be dictated by the safety and security of our troops. Obama also did an about face on FISA. Back in June, Obama voted in favor of the new FISA bill, which exempts telecommunication companies from lawsuits stemming from wiretapping cases. But on December 17, 2007, Obama's office released this statement, quote, Senator Obama unequivocally opposes giving retroactive immunity to telecommunications companies and has co-sponsored Senator Dodd's efforts to remove that provision from the FISA bill. Obama's even flip-flopped on foreign relations. First, he told the American-Israeli Public Affairs Committee that he believed Jerusalem should not be divided. Jerusalem will remain the capital of Israel and it must remain undivided. But less than 24 hours later, Obama apparently changed his mind. In an interview the next day, he said, quote, Well, obviously, it's going to be up to the parties to negotiate a range of these issues, and Jerusalem will be a part of those negotiations. My belief is that, as a practical matter, it would be very difficult to execute. Well, Senator, which one is it? Obama also pledged to possibly renegotiate the North Atlantic Free Trade Agreement. Will you, as president, say to Canada and Mexico, this has not worked for us, we are out? I will make sure that we re renegotiate. But during an interview with Fortune magazine, Obama was asked to clarify his stance on NAFTA. The senator went on to say, quote, I think that sometimes during campaigns, the rhetoric gets overheated and amplified. Politicians are always guilty of that, and I don't exempt myself. So I guess that's true. After all, the senator can't even make up his own mind on who to root for in the World Series. Since the White Sox lost, I'll go ahead and root for the Phillies now. So when you see a White Sox fan showing love to the Rays, and the Rays showing some love back, you know we're on to something right here. Obama's position on many issues has earned him the spot as the most liberal senator in the United States. That leads us to our sixth reason. With his elitist attitude clinging to his Columbia and Harvard University degrees, Barack Obama is anything but mainstream. Sitting in his million dollar home, claiming to be for the people, we have to wonder how in touch he is with the average American. But let's be honest, Senator Obama has already given us a look inside his thinking. That is just one example of many that illustrates just how far left he really is. Take, for example, his stance on abortion. On this fundamental issue, I will not yield. And yield he doesn't. 
1997, Barack Obama opposed a bill banning partial birth abortions in the Illinois State Senate. And in 2002, he spoke out against the bill called the Induced Birth Infant Liability Act, which would have protected babies who survived botched abortions. He has long been a supporter of providing sex education to kids grades K through 12. Yes, kindergartners. Barack Obama supports uh, teaching sex education to kindergartners. And, but, but it's the right thing to do. 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 And that's just the beginning. While the Democratic nominee would like voters to believe that he would uphold the Second Amendment, while well, his record suggests otherwise. Politico.com has uncovered a questionnaire from 1996 that showed Obama taking a much more liberal stance on gun control than he now claims to have. She indicated that he would support legislation that would ban the manufacture, sale, and even possession of handguns. The questionnaire even has Obama's handwriting on the document, but his campaign continues to deny its authenticity. So he does want to take away your guns and at the same time open your borders. Barack Obama tends to lean to providing amnesty to those illegally living right here in the U.S. During a Democratic candidates debate sponsored by NPR, Obama said, quote, Give the 12 million people who are here illegally, many of whom have been here for years, many of whom have U.S. citizens for children, to make sure that they've got a pathway to legalization. They are counting on us to stop the hateful rhetoric filling our airwaves and rise above the fear and rise above the demagoguery. Upholding the law is demagoguery, Senator? Now we've all heard Obama's slogan, change we can believe in. Sounds to me like the same old liberalism.